There are times when God calls every single one of us to take a real step of faith, to do something that's completely beyond what we've done before and to trust Him in the process. Friends of mine are currently doing that. They're stepping way out of the boat and God has got a special word to help us to navigate this faith journey. And I'm going to share it with you in this video today. Hi there, I'm Lisa Vandenberg of SaltSolutionsCoaching.com, where we love empowering the 2.0 version of you. We love coming alongside you and helping you to understand how you hear God, how you get to go on adventures with Jesus, and how He walks with you practically through every moment of your everyday life. So if you're new here, consider liking and subscribing, sharing this video with others too. So two friends of mine and their family, uh, God's just called them to go to a ministry school in a third world country and they are stepping out of the boat. <laughs> but if they look at the physical provision in front of them, the physical circumstances, it looks completely impossible. And this is really the first key. When we're stepping out in faith into something that God is behind, it's going to look impossible to us in the natural, right? This is the way that God can show off. This is the way he can show us who he really is beyond our own ability to provide for it. Now God gets to come and show you who he is for you. They have uh, got multiple confirmations that this is what they're supposed to do. So now they get to say yes, right? And we were on a similar journey about three and a half years ago. We moved from one state in America to another state and the provision just wasn't there. And the Lord said something to me that completely changed my viewpoint. He said to me, Lisa, you know, you guys think you on earth think that you need to build multiple streams of, of income. And I was like, Yes, Lord, that just seems to be clever, you know, um, so that if one stream of income dries up, you've got some more. And he said, Lisa, but if you look at multiple streams of income, income is merely an exchange of goods or services for money, right? There's, it's a very limited scope. So I said, okay, Lord, you know, I thought the multiple streams of income would, would deal with that. But he said, no, 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 I want you to ask me for something else instead. I want you to ask me for multiple streams of provision. And I sat there and I went, Lord, what, what does that mean? Why is it different from income and provision? And he said, because income is just the swap of goods and services for money, but provision lets me out of the box and looses God's ability to provide for us in ways that are way bigger than just money. Money is certainly a component of it, but there's just so many other ways that he can provide for us, right? So I wanted to wear this shirt of mine. It says Rhythms of Grace. I'm going to read you Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And I'm reading it from the Message Bible because this is where this phrase comes from, right? And it says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live lightly and freely. <laughs> that just sounds amazing, right? Because in the midst of our everyday life, there are things that feel heavy. We don't feel light and free. We feel disconnected and far from Jesus at times like that. And so he's saying in this verse, just, just come to me and learn how I do it. See how I do things. So it's the same invitation where, where we can switch from multiple streams of income to multiple streams of provision. And so on this journey that my husband and I took uh, three and a half, almost four years ago now, I said to him, okay, Lord, will you show me what multiple streams of provision looks like? And he said, Lisa, I want you to, I want you to get a, a notepad. You can do it either electronically or on paper. And I want you to start writing down every single thing that happens in the day that was a kindness to you that somebody else gave to you whether it's wisdom whether it's a physical object whether it's time that they gave to you whether it's counsel that they gave to you whether they were just kind to you 
I want you to start recording all the ways that you get something that will help you towards your journey. Friends, it was fascinating and I really want to encourage you to do this too. There's some questions in the journaling PDF that you can download beneath this video that will help you to go on this journey with God in your current circumstances where you are stepping out in faith and God wants to provide for you. Right. So I started writing it down and, and I wrote down things like um, somebody back paid us for fixing their computer. Then I wrote down, oh, somebody gave me some wisdom about the city we're moving to today. And then I'd write down, oh, so I connected with that person and they have a friend who's going to let us stay with them for the first two weeks that we get there. And then I wrote down, oh, I went to the, the towing place and uh, one of our cars could not tow the trailer that we needed to take. So what seemed like bad news, I said, okay, Lord, will you show me where the provision is? And he said, I want you to sell it. So we, we put the, uh, the car up and its uh, value was a certain amount and, and I got a figure from the Lord of what to put it on. And seven people asked for the car, came to, to look at the car. And uh, of them, two, uh, two actually came, right? And the one lady came and she said, this is a fantastic car, but I don't feel like it's for me. I feel like it's for somebody else. So I said, that's awesome. That also could have looked like bad news, right? Because I was trying to sell the car and she said no. So in the very next day, a gentleman comes in and he says, uh, he goes on a test drive with me. So I'm sitting in the passenger seat and he's driving the car just to test it out and see. And while we're driving, we get talking. And he tells me that he wants to buy the car as a gift for his grandson. It'll be his grandson's first car. And he so wants to give his grandson this gift. We had a wonderful time. We talked on the journey. When we got back home, he paid me exactly the asking price for the car. I got to be blessed with stories of listening to him wanting to sow a legacy. He got to be blessed with some of my testimony stories of God. And his grandson got to be blessed by getting a car, right? It was just amazing. So I went through, I did this for the three months leading up to us leaving. And then for a couple months after we came as well. I was literally scrolling through it just before coming on this video. I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled through all of the notes of every single day where somebody um, gave us some wisdom of how to leave our city well and how to go to the new city well, where somebody gave us a certain amount of money that was exactly a verse in the Bible that God had given them for us. <laughs> it, was, it was just crazy writing down the provision. And you know what it did? It did these things for me. First of all, it helped me to see that money does not have to be a barrier. If you don't have enough, God is not only tied in to providing for you in ways of money, right? He provided in so many other ways. So God is not tied to money. It's just one stream of provision. Second of all, it helps you to constantly be aware of the goodness of God in your life, the ways he's actively looking after you. And the act of doing it every single day, I knew I was writing down something every day. And so I began to wake up in the morning expecting the goodness of God, excited to see what he would do. And then by the end of the day, I'd read over what he'd done and it just put me in this place of awe and wonder at how God was providing on this faith journey that he'd asked us to, right? And then the third thing that it does is it really helped me to understand how personally God is involved in our lives. We felt seen by God. We felt known by God. We felt heard by God. We felt like he was interested in our journey, that it blessed him. It pleased his heart because the Bible says um, that we must believe that he is God and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It puts a smile on God's face when we trust him, when we go on this faith journey and we say, God, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how it's going to turn out except that it'll be good because we're with you so lead and guide me along the way so my friend whatever faith journey he's inviting you in today whether it involves moving somewhere whether it means taking a new job whether it means whatever it means in your life that looks too big for you to do alone know that that's the way it's supposed to be don't let that disturb you or put you off because God needs it to look that big so that only he can be the provider and you get to walk with him and experience him as your father experience Jesus as your best friend experience the Holy Spirit as your guide throughout the day that is what makes stories of great faith 
with living and with reading. So as always, Jesus is inviting you on this adventure today. Will you accept? Look forward to seeing you next week and come across and visit us at saltsolutionscoaching.com. Let's see how we can walk along these faith journeys with you side by side, helping you to understand who you are and whose you are and how God is looking after and loving on you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. See you next time.